Welcome to Open BXRX on BronxNet. I'm your host, Sanji Lopez, inviting you to get social with us at BronxNet TV on Instagram and Twitter and BronxNet Community Television on Facebook. Also, if you're watching us on cable, you can stay up to date with our on-screen social media feeds, providing the latest COVID-19 and community updates and important headlines. We're all being told to shelter in place and social distance. But what about the homeless population? BronxWorks is remaining committed to their mission and working remotely to provide services to some of the most vulnerable during COVID-19. Joining us now is Eileen Torres, Executive Director at Bronx Works. Thank you for joining us, Eileen. Thank you for having me. So first, Eileen, can we just talk about Bronx Works and the homeless services during COVID-19? Sure. Um, so working with the homeless population is challenging um, in, under normal circumstances. Um, and so those challenges have just really increased um, during this crisis. Um, our, our clients are very vulnerable. Um, and we have a number of shelters for singles. We have a number of shelters for homeless families as well. Um, and so what we've done is essentially prepare, try to prepare our staff, um, you know, keeping their safety and their um, health um, of utmost priority, um, as, long as, as well as the safety and health of our clients. And so we've um, distributed masks, gloves, you know, hand sanitizers, um, Clark's wipes, uh, the supplies that seem to be just flying off the shelf these days. Um, and so we've had, we have all of our staff su um, supplied with all these essential items right now. Um, and we've reviewed all the CDC guidelines with social distancing, um, wiping down commonly touched surfaces. Um, and, you know, the staff are completely dedicated. Um, they, are worried and concerned about their own well-being, um, but they are very committed to the clients um, and continue to come in on a very daily basis. So, and how is the team adapting to remote um, work? So, um, not all staff are able to work remotely. Um, in particular, the twenty-four hour facilities do require for staff to come in. Um, our security, our maintenance, our case managers—they're on the front lines of things. Uh, and so, it's been very interesting. Uh, Pre-COVID nineteen, um, our staff did have laptops and devices, but not all of them. You know, most of the staff that had those devices were um, managers or client care coordinators. Um, and so the, the case managers didn't necessarily have a laptop at home that we've issued to them um, by the agency. So there was a big scramble to, of course, meet the need um, and do that quickly. Um, and we've gone ahead and purchased additional devices. Um, and so we're also trying to stay connected and trying to figure things out um, like the rest of the world. Um, and so the work continues. Uh, the staff are um, at the ready and have been very, very good and about and resourceful in trying to figure things out also with us. Right. Um, we certainly have made some mistakes in the beginning about, you know, trying to figure out how to connect people, assuming that if we hand out tablets to everyone or a laptop to people that they immediately have, you know, Wi-Fi at home, that's not necessarily the case with some of the employees. So we've had to also order Wi-Fi devices for them so that they're able to connect um, to the and use the tablet at, at home as well, so. Bronx Work staff has also been very dedicated to providing food, even throughout the crisis, via food pantries. Can you tell us where people in need can go to get this help, Eileen? Bronx Works generally, one of the biggest challenges that um, our community that we serve um, faces usually has to do with evictions, right? And so now there's a moratorium on the evictions for 90 days. And so I, I do feel that while there's a stay on that, people are then that may be an issue later on. So currently what the biggest, the biggest uh, number of calls that, the largest number of calls that we're getting and requests that we're getting are for food assistance. Um, and that's coming in from families um, that we're already connected to, perhaps that we're in working in developments that they live in, um, like providing food there, right? So it may be a development that we're providing workforce development services or a development where we're 
we have historically been the after school provider. So though we're not generally in the service of providing food to the residents in that building. And so we're getting lots of calls because people know us um, from those families saying, how can you help us? We don't have food in the house. Um, we're also getting a lot of calls from our seniors. Um, we operate a number of senior centers. Um, and so I guess um, word of mouth, uh, a number of seniors that are not necessarily connected to our senior centers have been calling, um, also looking for food. Um, so I think right now the number one priority for us is trying to mobilize um, and try to get um, either purchase food or partner with a number of other organizations that have been really, really generous to us um, right now. Um, there's one group in particular, the Bronx Private Industry Council that um, quickly was able to get us donations. Um, um, so that we, this past Saturday, we operated our food pantry and we had a number of new families and lar very large households come in seeking food um, for the pantry. Um, all, all at the same time that we're trying to make sure that we're maintaining our social distance from everyone. So that's also been a challenge for us. But um, uh, so people can go to our 1130 Grand Concourse location, which is our main site, our main hub. Um, there's a Saturday pantry. The next time it will, it will be open every other Saturday. So the next time it will be open is Saturday, April, April 11th. And then we have um, two senior centers to operate food pantries. We're still trying to get a sense of how much food we will have um, so that we can operate and we'll put that up on our website. Um, but there'll be two senior centers that will continue to operate their food pantry. And before anyone sort of um, uh, wonders like how are we able to continue to operate those um, and still maintain social dis distance. Um, you know, we set up a uh, blue painter's tape on the sidewalk to make sure that people understood to stand six feet apart. Um, we distributed um, gloves and uh, masks and hand sanitizers and clorox wipes um, to our staff. Um, and the pantry at 1130 Grand Concourse is actually a client choice pantry where typically um, clients are able to come in and shop for their items. It's kind of like a little mini supermarket where they get to pick what they would like. Um, and obviously um, right now with COVID-19 crisis, we're not able to do that. So what we did do is we handed out a menu uh, for the clients, and they were able to select the items on the paper, hand that paper over to a staff member um, who, again, had gloves and a mask on, um, and then the, the staff member handed it to the art, the volunteers, um, which were really our senior staff that were there this past Saturday, and we were able to put the items in the bag for them and then hand the items already bagged to the clients. Um, and so it's just a new way for us, you know, to do this. Um, so folks, don't worry. Bronx Works has an entire system ready in order to ensure <laughs> that, you know, safety and the precautions are being followed and still assisting the public. So thank you, Eileen, for that. Um, yeah. Can we learn also about the Bronx Works Emergency Fund for COVID? Yes. So um, we, you know, one of the things that we usually do on an annual basis is we host an annual gala. Um, obviously with this crisis, we had to cancel our gala and the gala is what brings in the most amount of unrestricted dollars for um, Bronx Works. And so one of the things that um, we were, that we quickly did is try to set an emergency fund because usually typically with the funds that we get from the gala, that allows some flexible funding for us to, to continue to meet the needs of the community, um, even if we don't have necessarily have a grant from either the city or foundation to do whatever service it is that needs to be done for the community. And so with this emergency fund, um, you know, one of the examples I get I gave was um, the need for food, the increased need for food. Um, and so our programs, we have only three pantries that we're operating. Um, and obviously we won't be able to meet that increased need for Bronx sites. So something like this with the emergency fund, we would be able to get additional dollars that would allow us then to go out, either purchase food, um, purchase the bags that we would be able to put everything into, um, bring in if we need to um, additional staff to help um, because what we're finding is the typical staffing pattern that we've set up with volunteers 
uh, for a pantry of the size that we normally have um, isn't sufficient right now because um, we're seeing more people who need the service. We also have been delivering um, some of the meals, like delivering emergency pantry bags to different housing developments that we um, don't typically service with food. And so that requires then a driver that we don't, you know, we haven't had um, a driver, the gas for the van to drive around, um, the boxes, like everything that sort of is, um, that's needed to run this additional service. Um, the other thing that we we set up the fund for is to match the, the need that we have to ensure the safety and wellness of our staff and our clients, um, because now we have this increase, um, the increased need to buy cleaning supplies, um, you know, to do deep cleaning very regularly, um, which we hadn't necessarily been doing before. Um, and we've also engaged an outside um, vendor to come in and do some of the deep cleaning for us. Um, so they come in with their little hazmat suits um, and everything, um, just because we want to take every precaution that we can um, with clients and staff, right? And so that is a very expensive service, not something that we ever predicted we would need um, and not something that we budgeted for. So, um, so we've set up that emergency fund. And how can people collaborate and um, help out and donate to this fund? Um, the, the, you know, the best thing that people do can do is, um, if they are willing, um, is to make a donation. No donation is too small, um, because then it helps us know exactly what we, how much we have to spend, um, and we can budget accordingly for who knows for the duration of this crisis. Right? We don't really really know. We've been told different things. It's going to end in April. It'll, now it sort of seems like it'll be May. Then, you know, um, I believe the last thing the governor said was um, he showed a chart that shows really that we'll be in this together um, till really the end of June into July. So. And Eileen, to close out, um, just a message for Bronx, um, the Bronx sites and vulnerable communities from Bronx Works at this time. Um, our message is, look, you know, the, the Bronx, we're resilient people, right? Um, we've been through fires in the 70s. We've really come such a long way. Um, and we will get through this. We'll get through this together. Um, I think, you know, one of the things that I've seen is people in general want to help one another. Um, and that's a beautiful thing, right? So we're in the business as it is to always make that our mission to help our neighbor, but we certainly see those who have very little um, try to give the minimum that they have, the little bit that they have to someone else. Um, and I really do think that, again, you know, together we're going to get through this. We'll be stronger. Yes, we will. And thank you so much, Eileen, for joining us today. Thank you to Bronx Works for all the work that you've been doing and continue to do throughout this crisis. Well, thank you. Folks, the Bronx Works Emergency Fund helps some of the most vulnerable communities in New York City during COVID-19 crisis. Please visit bronxworks.org to see how you can help out. OpenBXRX will be right back.